Thank you for joining us today to hear this life-changing message. We hope you and your family are blessed. If you enjoy, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Also, please consider becoming a supporter of the channel to help us continue going. Blessings. With us tonight, we're going to get into the Word of the Lord tonight. And I have, uh, of course, had a, a rejoicing time in seeing the faces of people that we have. When you preach the Word and say, you shall receive the Holy Ghost, God is going to change your life and then to see them one at a time. But I have a word of prophecy tonight. I've wrestled with it all day, and I'm, I'm simply going to deliver this tonight. I want to do this in the spirit of this service tonight. As we saw, looked in the faces of dozens of people this morning that we're breaking through to the Holy Ghost, and it was the divine will of God that was so exciting. And I, I just rejoiced in most of them, brand new babies. Some have been around a while, but for the most part, these are folks that we've just been little by little leading to the altar. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. You remember the night that I called you to Atlanta? See, I'd gone to the hotel to pray because I promised Bishop that I would pray about it. I said, give me two weeks. And I needed two weeks to be able to, because I was going to say no. I'd already decided that. I'm not going to Atlanta. I don't belong in Atlanta. And as I began to pray, the more I prayed, the more the Holy Ghost began to grip us. And I began to fear. I be, actually begin to fear. I, I may end up in Atlanta. My Lord, help us. And... When the two weeks was over, the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, I will restore what the canker worm hath destroyed. That is what I'm calling you to do, to come and allow there to be restoration. And here's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me today in this altar. Now, I had to rush out because I had a funeral. We barely got folks baptized. I had to go straight to a funeral and then come straight back to service. But in the altar service, the Lord said, you see these babes, how they're being filled. That's what I want to do to your backsliders, your loved ones, your children, your grandchildren. I want to draw them back into this altar, and it is going to happen. Come on, let's give him a little bit of praise. Let's have a little faith here for just a moment. Father, we thank you because you're going to restore what the enemy has tried to take. And we give you praise for it. Hallelujah. We give you praise for it. Now, I don't mean for one minute that one soul is more important to God than another. You can walk right off the street and get the Holy Ghost, and you're just as important as anybody in this world. But God is promising us that he wants to reach out to our backsliders, our loved ones. So I want us to hold on to that, folks. This is just the first day of revival. We've already seen unprecedented. And I want to tell you when it began. Brother Capitello was preaching this morning, and as soon as he began to preach, I knew we were going to have an outpouring. Not only because it was tremendous preaching, but because the saints were receiving it. I saw people reaching. That I saw things begin to break loose. I saw people that I knew had never lifted their hands like that. And they begin to worship and reach out. But that's not when I knew. I knew we were going to have a breakthrough like we had never had when the Tuesday night prayer meeting became a record-breaking attendance. We filled this church on a Tuesday night with people praying and crying out to God. I want Brother Capitella to come, but before he does, I want us to lift our hands and let's reach our hands towards the Capitellas and let's pray for them tonight. Father, we thank you for the anointing. We feel it right now. I pray that you will use him tonight. Bless this place in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor, and praise the Lord, everyone. 
Would you lift your hands again to Jesus and let's worship him with our voices? Hallelujah. Somebody let your voice out a little bit. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I thank the Lord for what he did this morning. The hunger of this church, the eagerness of this church to step into an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. You know, if I could put into one word what we feel in this church, it would be pure. The anointing here is so pure. The singers, the musicians, the, your pastor, your leaders, the anointing is so pure. There's no ulterior motives. There's nothing hidden. The, it's just purity. I, I want to tell you, you don't get that everywhere. I, I hope you know how good you've got it. You don't get that everywhere. And I, I thank God for what I feel in this place. I want to turn your attention to John chapter 3, beginning with verse number 12. Bible says, Jesus speaking, if I have told you earthly things and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Everybody say spiritual things. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man which is in heaven. I want you to notice something. Jesus is speaking to them. They see him. They're watching his face. They're listening to him. And he said, the son of man is in heaven. I want to preach to you tonight for a few minutes on this topic, heavenly places. Heavenly places. Would you put your Bibles down? Let's lift our hands and our voices to the Lord one more time. Let's ask God to do exactly what he wants to do. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by the authority of the word of God, by the power of the name Jesus, we bind every spirit that is contrary to the work of the Lord. We loose the angels of God here in this place tonight. I pray that every eye would see and every ear would hear what thus saith the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, and everybody said, in Jesus' name, would you clap your hands one more time unto the Lord, and somebody give God some praise with your voices. Ah, uh, we can do just a little bit better than that, I think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give two or three people a high five. Say, let's get up into some heavenly places tonight. You may be seated. There is a place that you can go in the spirit in prayer where the invisibility of Jesus becomes irrelevant. I'm going to say that again. There is a place that you can go in worship, in the spirit, in prayer, where the invisibility of Jesus becomes irrelevant. I have thought to myself, and perhaps some of you have, if I could only have been there, when he was here physically. I cannot imagine what it would have been like 
to see him face to face. Has anybody ever thought like that? Can you imagine shaking the hand of Jesus Christ? How you doing, Jesus? Good to see you. Thanks for coming. Can you imagine being John, the beloved, and putting your head on the chest of Jesus Christ and hearing his breathing, hearing the heartbeat of God? Has anybody ever thought about that? I've imagined myself as the lady who broke the alabaster box. I got past the lady part very quickly and imagined myself in the position. My wife burst out laughing, so I had to clarify. Imagine myself in the position at the feet of Jesus Christ, washing his feet with my tears and pouring that box of ointment on his body. I've imagined these things. Can you imagine being with Jesus and seeing his face as he spoke into that dark tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. What did his eyes look like? What was he doing with his hands? I, I, I imagine these things. I imagine Jesus stepping up on the bow of the ship. The wind is blowing. The waves are boisterous. The water is hitting, crashing up against the side of the ship, and the disciples are fearing for their lives, Jesus looks into these violent elements and simply says, peace, be still. And everything just... <sighs> if I saw him, I would be drooling on myself. I, I can imagine Mary sat at his feet. Martha was serving, but Mary sat at the feet of Jesus Christ and asked him questions, and he was talking to her. I would just drool all over myself. I don't know what I would do. I, looking into the eyes of Jesus Christ himself, I would lose control of myself. And there were people in the New Testament that followed him to the cross, but you must understand, out of the thousands of people that Jesus ministered to, the thousands that he healed, the thousands that he gave miracles to, there were only four people at the foot of the cross. There was Mary, his mother, Mary, the wife of Cleophas, Martha, I'm sorry, Mary Magdalene. And John the Beloved, out of the thousands of people that followed him, four followed him to the cross. Why? Because the thousands that saw Jesus physically had a massive challenge to face. The view of the Messiah that they had in their head did not match the Messiah that they saw with their eyes. The Bible says that David was a good-looking boy, boy, King David. He was very good-looking, had a beautiful countenance. Solomon was beautiful. These kings were arrayed in glory. They sat upon their thrones and their majesty. And now this Jesus Christ is coming, and he is being hailed as the king of the Jews, yet he hangs out with commoners. And he has an ugly garment, and he's got dust in between his toes. And as a matter of fact, Isaiah said of him that when you see him, there is no beauty that you should desire him. He hath no form nor comeliness. Jesus was not a good-looking man. Thank you, all two of you. That sounds a bit sacrilegious, doesn't it? He was not a good-looking man. People would not have followed him. For what they saw with their eyes, there was a massive clash. You see, when Jesus went to Nazareth, he began to teach, and they said, what grace, where does this grace come from that he's speaking with? But is this not 
uh, the son of Joseph and Mary and the mother of uh, the brother of Joseph and his cousins are here with us and his sisters and 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 he came and I, what can any good thing come out of Nazareth what we know where this guy comes from their their eyes presented a challenge to them that they could not overcome the Jews could not get over the humanity of Jesus Christ and I've said to myself well if I would have just lived back then I would have been different. But we face the same faith dilemma in our day today. The Jews couldn't get over his humanity, and we don't get over his invisibility. Thank you. Let's get real. If you saw Jesus standing up here in the flesh, I don't think you'd be sitting there nodding your head. As a matter of fact, I would elbow you in the face so I could be there first to bow before him and to grab his feet and make sure he doesn't go to anybody else. It would get a little bit crazy in here if you could actually see Jesus standing on this platform. And I want to tell you something. You can reach a place in worship. You can reach a place in the spirit where your eyes no longer matter. What your eyes are telling you. Because your eyes are telling you he's not here. Whether you realize it or not, your eyes are telling you he's not here. But you can reach a place in praise and in worship and in prayer where your eyes lose their authority over what is reality in your life. You get it? It's like a veil comes off of your mind and you realize he's really here. Now, I will tell you, I'll just be blunt. I'm leaving tomorrow morning, and so it makes me very bold. If you've been watching a lot of TV, and your mind's been in Hollywood, and your mind's been on sports, and your mind's been in this and that, it's going to be difficult to wrench it away from the power of the carnal nature. It's hard to pray today if you didn't pray yesterday. I'm preaching to the core tonight. It's hard to pray today if you didn't break through yesterday. But you see, prayer is in direct opposition to the carnal mind. And the more that you pray, the less the carnal mind has authority over reality in your life. That's why you can reach a place in the spirit. It don't matter what the circumstance says. I know the doctor said this. I know evidence says this. I know the circumstance says this. The situation dictates this. But I've been in the spirit. I've been with the Lord. And my mind has been released from the carnal nature. My mind has been unshackled from the carnal nature. I'm seeing through the eyes of Jesus Christ. He does answer prayer. He does heal the body. He will make a way out of no way. He will open a door that I cannot see. He can do the impossible. He can heal cancer. He can open blinded eyes. He he can help you financially. He can change you from your past. He can do it. If you believe it, lift your hands and lift your voices and cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Do it again. I, can, I feel like we should kind of open a flow here a little bit. If you've got the Holy Ghost, I want you to talk in tongues right now. I want you to begin to speak in tongues. I want you to speak in the Spirit right now. Hallelujah! I want to tell some of you something tonight. If you're sick of the numbness that you feel, 
You sick of feeling numb when you come to church? Where is he? Don't feel it. You sick of dealing with those skeptical thoughts? You tired of dealing with that unbelief, that negativity? Let me tell you what you must do. You must get out of the flesh and into the spirit. And the journey from flesh to spirit must be filled with praise. It must be filled with worship. It must be filled with prayer. You're not going to get there being comfortable. You got to get out of your flesh and into the Holy Ghost. Ah, God deliver us from that stinking, dirty, rotten, spectator spirit. I get so, uh, I'll just be transparent with you. I was preaching in uh, Denver, Colorado. You may be seated or stand or run, roll. I don't care what you do. Have fun. Preaching in Colorado. Had a mighty revival. Intended to do one Sunday. And something broke out and we received two direct words of prophecy. That we were to continue this revival. The pastor and the bishop asked us, pleaded with us, please stay. And we just do not change our schedule unless uh, something incredibly dramatic happens. And we're like, we're not going to do it. We're sorry. We're already booked. They said, well, we're going to pray that God changes your schedule. And we're like, okay, you pray, but we're going to the other place. And Monday, we got two very direct words of prophecy that said, there is a bishop and there's a church asking you to stay. You must stay. It's God's will. And so many incredible things happened. We saw over a period of several months, we saw over 152, 162 people receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The evidence of speaking in tongues. And we saw, I believe, over 80, 90 people baptized. And Satan is so dumb. Because while we were there, one morning, an usher came up to me before church Sunday morning. And he handed me this book. He said, a Satanist came and he has a message for you. And this, I believe, was the second weekend I was there. He said he was a very nice, nicely dressed Satanist. He didn't have like a big black hat or anything. He, uh, he had a nice suit and tie on, and he came and he said, I have a message for Joey Campitello. And he, the, the usher must have been nosy because he was browsing through the book. And he had looked up the website in the book, and he realized this guy was a Satanist. And there was some messages in that book. And one of the messages to me was, you will never step foot in another house of worship again. Well, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. I've been in like a thousand churches since then. And in that revival, we had over 162 people get the whole. Satan is just dumb, okay? And that, that happened, and it showed me something. That you can get to a place in the spirit where you are walking in a realm that Satan operates in this world. It's a spiritual place. It's a heavenly place. The Bible talks about principalities and powers and, and spiritual wickedness in high places. The word high means heavenly. It's a heavenly place. There's a supernatural realm that is there. And, and I, I've got to tell you, to step into that place as a minister... I pray and I fast and I study and I do everything I can to remove myself from the carnal realm into the spirit realm. And sometimes as a minister, and especially in Denver, I, I got so frustrated because I feel like I'm trying to pull people against their will. Come, come, come through the door, step into the spirit, get into the heavenly places. And I feel like I'm pulling and pulling and pulling. And I, I got so frustrated in this revival, it just came on me. I said, I, I feel like I'm trying to, to preach to people to get you to do something against your will. I said, what, where are the people, like in the book of Acts, when the Ethiopian eunuch said, here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? This is what I need to do. Let's do it. What doth hinder me to be baptized? 
I said, where are the people that are just hungry enough? You don't want to be a spectator. You want to be a participator. And when I said that, this was, this was right in the beginning of the message, a man popped right out of the third row, walked up. I want to get baptized right now. Well, that messed up everything. You know, somebody can get the Holy Ghost and go back to their seat, but to get baptized, they're going to get dunked in water. Everybody's going to watch them. It messed up everything. And I'm like, well, I'll, let's get you baptized, and I'll keep on preaching. When you're ready to get baptized, they'll dunk you under, and we'll keep on preaching. And while he was moving back, another lady came out right out of her pew, walked up and said, I want to get baptized in Jesus' name right now. And I'm telling you, for the next hour, one person after another in that church came out of their pews, 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 walked up to the front, and they got baptized in Jesus' name. Every single one of them, when they got dunked under, they came out, they started speaking in tongues. They were filled with the Holy Ghost as the Spirit gave the utterance. Why? Because because they decided, I'm not going to be just a spectator. I'm not just going to hear somebody preach about it. I want to be involved. I want to experience just what we were talking about this morning, moving from believer to receiver. Yeah. Clap your hands to the Lord and give a shout of praise. But I want to help you tonight. I want to relay some things that God has put into my spirit. I believe sometimes when we come to church, we can be more focused on the people around us than we are Jesus. We are more people conscious than we are God conscious. That's why some of you are worshiping like. You ain't doing that for the Lord. You trying to look good, dude. You trying to look good, girl. Keep that hair just right. Because you put a lot of hairspray in it. I don't know how you ladies are not pulled over and given a DUI for the amount of alcohol you inhale when you use hairspray. My wife, my it's like a cloud that just a cloud, a glory cloud just moves out of the bathroom. <laughs> And then one bottle goes in the trash and another bottle. <laughs> okay, I'm exaggerating just a little bit. And you guys, we do the same thing, all that gel. Jonathan's shaking his head right now. I, I knew that spirit was on you, Jonathan. Gel. <laughs> gel everywhere. <laughs> Getting it just right. And if it don't work, wash it out and do it again. I was preaching to youth camp. And I turned to the young men. I said, all the gel y'all are using. And they, every single one of them just said, I said, what do y'all use? They said, dap. It's some kind of like pomade or something. It's like some kind of greasy white stuff that all the guys are putting in their hair. Whatever you use to put it in there, you don't want to mess it up. And so you make sure your tie is just right and you make sure your coat's just right. What happened to the good old days where bobby pins were flying out of hair? <laughs> Lethal projectiles. <laughs> shoes flew off of feet. Anybody ever seen shoes come off of feet? Holy rollers, people. I can remember the old timers when they came to church. Uh, two in particular. One told mama, he said, mama, if I get in the spirit first, you got to watch the kids. And she said, okay, hubby, but if I get in the spirit first, you got to watch the kids. The entire purpose of coming to church uh, was not just to hear a message so you could go home and say, what great preaching or what a great message or wasn't that fun? Uh, the entire purpose of coming to church uh, is so you could step into a heavenly place. Uh, you could get into a place in the spirit uh, that you've never been before you can leave this old world goodbye and enter into a holy place uh, where the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy head of a Korean that a higher and if you want it you can have it uh, but you got to reach for it uh, you got to worship for it uh, you might have to dance for it uh, you might have to shout for it uh, but as soon as you begin uh, your altitude begins to increase You can actually get to a place in the spirit where worries disappear. I don't mean problems disappear. Problems are still there. But you, your worries disappear. 
What did David say? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt the Lord together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fear. Two verses later, he said, this poor man cried, and the Lord saved him out of all his troubles. Look at the progression, if you don't mind. The first thing that David got delivered from was the fear of the problem. And then two verses later, he was delivered from the problem. There's a place you can go in the spirit. You may still be looking at that doctor's report, and there's no change. Your family may still be in chaos. You may be still dealing with the junk that you came in here with. But there's a place you can go. There's a heavenly place you can go where fear is broken. Doubt is broken. Worry is thrown away. Anxiety is pushed aside and it's peace like a river it's peace like a river it's peace that passes all understanding it's joy unspeakable and full of glory our churches I'm just ministering out of my spirit as you know I haven't even looked at my notes I'm just following the Lord right now our churches are filled with with worship judges. And let me just tell you, I'm not going to look at you, but you drive me nuts. Worship judges. People are dancing, shouting, lifting their voice, and you're like. Do you know, sir? Do you know, ma'am? You are hindering the flow of the spirit. I just speak straight to you. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be offensive. I hope I'm not being. I, I, I want to tell you something. Do you know what the Bible means when it says they were all with one accord in one place? We've experienced every other revival in the book of Acts except the first revival. I don't know if I have ever been in a place where everybody was in one accord in one place. One accord comes from two words. One means unanimous, and the other one means passion. When it says they were in one accord, they were unanimous in their passion. That means you didn't leave it to the freak up front to do all the dancing for you. No offense, dude. You didn't leave it to the pastor to get up there and shake and tremble and sweat and push his guts out while you sit there and nod your head. Everybody was in one accord. Everybody was unanimous in their passion. And when God saw everybody reaching at the same time, pushing at the same time, hoping at the same time, praising at the same time, the power and the presence of God filled that place, but the walls could not contain it. It burst out. The people burst out of those walls and went into the streets. And in just a few minutes, 3,000 people were filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, I wonder what would happen in this place uh, if we all stopped uh, thinking about everybody else and everything else uh, and we put our eyes, put our minds, uh, put our spirits uh, in one accord with Jesus. Uh, I'll tell you what would happen. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, would take over. The Holy Ghost would take over. The Holy Ghost would take over. Well, let your voice out for a moment. Do what you feel. Let your voice out. In a boat, I you. Well, 
Well, why don't we do it with her for just a second? Why don't you lift your voice one more time and just worship God with her? Shela bahasa kata de bahata. I want to tell you about a principle God taught me about prayer and worship and being in the spirit. I took a flight from Albany, New York to Washington, Dulles. And it's a short flight, and so it was a little puddle hopper, maybe a 50-seater jet. It was a dark and gloomy morning. There was a thick cloud cover in Albany, New York. A storm had rolled in, and it was just rainy, gloomy. And when we got on the plane, it was very dark because of the cloud cover. It's like 9 o'clock in the morning. And the pilot came over the intercom, and he said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with this front that has moved over the top of us. So when we take off, I just want you to be prepared for what we're going to do. When we take off, we're going to go straight up through this thing as quickly as we can. Our angle of descent is going to be a little bit sharper than what you're used to what he said. So don't be alarmed. There's going to be some turbulence. You're going to feel some pressure, but that'll put us above this front, and then we'll go on to where we're going. And so I really didn't think much of it. Okay, thanks for the heads up. Doing what I normally do, and we start taxiing down the runway, and when we took off, this pilot was not joking about what he had said. It was like... (laughs) No, it wasn't that much. It was about that right there. And, man, you could feel the pressure, and everybody got quiet. And the plane started shaking. <laughs> you could hear things rattling. I don't, it felt like the wings were about to rattle off the side of that airplane. I was, I was scared. I was legitimately scared for my life, and everybody else was too. And I was looking outside, and you could see a little bit before, but now you couldn't see anything because we're in the middle of these dark storm clouds, lightnings flashing. And things are shaking. Everybody's totally silent. And all of the sudden, we broke through. (sighs) And light that was hidden just a moment before flashed through the entire plane. Every window was illuminated by the unfiltered sun. And man... Things stopped shaking. Everything became perfectly calm. The plane leveled out. The pilot came over the intercom. He said, now we're going to turn and begin our navigation to Washington, Dulles. And God began to speak to me. Because when you begin to worship, your spiritual altitude starts increasing. And so many people give up down here because it's tough. Sometimes worship ain't easy. Let's get real. I'm so tired in my body right now, I feel like my head's about to pop off. I preached five times in four days. Sometimes worship is hard. Sometimes pushing is hard. Y'all been working all week long. You've been praying. You've been doing outreach. And my God, we had 25 people get the Holy Ghost. Y'all were laying hands on everybody. Sometimes it's difficult, and because of the difficulty, we feel the gravity pulling us down, and we're trying to go up, and we feel this drag, and we're trying to go up, and we feel this drag, and we start shaking, and we feel the difficulty of that ascent, and so many people stop there, and they just go back down and give up, and they live under that cloud cover, but if you keep on saying Jesus, if you keep on saying hallelujah, if you keep on lifting your hands, if you keep on 
dancing. If you keep on reaching, you will continue to climb. And all of the sudden, the breakthrough occurs. What used to be hanging over you is now below you. What used to be holding you down is now pushing you up. The heaviness that used to be on you is underneath you. It's a distant memory. The darkness that used to overshadow you, it's gone. And the light of Jesus Christ is shining everywhere. But you got to keep climbing. You got to keep climbing. You got to keep reaching. Woo! Well, do it for a moment. Let your voice out and just go at it for a moment. Just a little bit more, would you? Just a little bit more. Some of y'all, you're just going to do whatever you want. But those that are hungry, those that are thirsty, just let your voice out. Just let your voice out. Don't worry about anybody. I'm going up. I don't know about you, but I'm going up. You can stay down there if you want to. You can stay down there if you want to. I'm going up. I'm going to find him. I'm going to be up there with Jesus. Let me tell you something. God is speaking to me very expressly right now. Some of you people that are just looking at me and watching everybody else do the work, let me tell you something. Some of you are dealing with some of the greatest challenges of your life. And you want counseling, you want prayer, you want attention, you want all the help you can. But God, I'm telling you, God wants to tell you right now, you are not going to get the breakthrough you need until you learn to dance. Thank you for nodding your head. I, I, I feel very bold right now. Because God is speaking to me, your problem is not the devil. What you are dealing with, that's that heaviness you're dealing with, that stinking skepticism. Some of you are locking eyes with me and you're just daring me to look at you. I'm coming against that spirit right now. That stinking spirit you're under, that ain't got nothing to do with the devil. You know what that is? Uncrucified flesh uncrucified flesh uh, and until you learn to dance whether you feel like it or not you're going to keep on living under those clouds uh, but I feel like uh, there's a good group of people in this house uh, you're ready to go up uh, you're ready to go up uh, I want to tell you don't worry about anybody else around you don't worry about what anybody else is doing go 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 get up into those heavenly places
I wish somebody would just get out of your pew and do what God's telling you to do right now. You need to do what God's telling you to do right now. You need to let your voice out. You need to not worry about anybody else, anybody, anything else, and just go. Go. There's a deliverance. There's a freedom. There is a liberty. Well, be seated. You may be seated. Well, if you won't be seated, why don't you just go at it and pull out all the stops and do what God's telling you to do. Just go. Come on, God's dealing with you right now to worship in a way you never have before. God is dealing with you now to worship in a way you never have before. Go ahead and do it. You know, sometimes you may be seated or stand, whatever you want to do. Sometimes God will, this is a side of God we really don't like to talk about, okay? Sometimes God will withhold from you what you are looking for to see how bad you really want it. That's not too popular to preach. But you look in the Bible, and he did it. He made people get way out of their comfort zones. I'll never forget. I was in our church. I, I dealt with a lot of pride. Insecurity. Just things of the flesh. I, God had to bust me out of all that nonsense. <clears throat> and I wanted God to come to me and do things on my terms. You know what I'm saying? And one particular evening, I believe it was a Sunday night service, and really it wasn't a crazy blowout service. People were doing their things, and the pastor had preached, and now the music was playing, and there was, there was people dancing or whatever. And I had, I had been seeking God, I'm talking all day long. I, I would go to Sunday morning, I would go before church Sunday morning, and I would pray at the church, have church, go out to eat, go back to the church and pray in that afternoon for hours and then go to church Sunday night. And man, I had been praying all afternoon, God, I feel like I'm at this, there's a wall in front of me. I don't know how to describe it. It just feels like I'm stuck. I'm not really moving. Anybody can relate to what I'm saying. You just feel stuck. You, it's just the, the flow is not there. The, the victory, that spark, that energy, that divine unction is, is not there. And I've been there for too long. Sometimes you can go through that and you find yourself, you've been here for several months now. You've been here for a year now. You've been here for two. Where is he? Why isn't it like the way it used to be? And man, I was seeking God. Where is my breakthrough? Where's the glory that you used to show me when I came to church? Man, when I used to come to church, it was like walking in clouds. The presence of God was so real to me. Then it all shut down. And 
I was so frustrated in that service. I had prayed. I had had people pray for me. I would prayed for others. Jesus seemed like he was a million miles away. And I'm saying, God, I want to be free. And the Lord spoke to me. Praise ye the Lord in the dance. It didn't sound exactly like that, but I wanted to let you know that was the Lord. I'm done joking. That's the last joke I have for the evening. No more jokes. And I said, but God, I need somebody to pray for me. I need a word. I need a, somebody to come up and lay hands on me and help me. Praise you, the Lord, in the dance. I don't feel anything, Lord. If I start dancing, am I being a hypocrite? I don't feel nothing. Aren't you supposed to feel like something before you start dancing? You know, a little bit of groove action going on. I don't feel nothing. Praise ye the Lord in the dance. I think you want me to praise you in the dance, don't you? Got out my hanky. Took my jacket off. Put it on the pew. Took my shoes off. And I was kind of a freak and they knew how I was, and they kind of cleared up that left aisle for me. They gave me free access so I didn't hurt anybody. I took my jacket off, took my shoes off, took my pants. No, I left my pants on. I'm kidding. I left my pants and shirt on. And I began to dance unto the Lord with all of my might. I mean dance. And it was just like, it was like dancing with no music. It was, it was dead. Didn't feel nothing. Almost like calisthenics or something. Didn't feel nothing. And after a few minutes, I'm out of shape. My, I'm starting to get that piercing pain in my rib cage. You know what I'm talking about? That knot that starts happening. You can't hardly breathe. And I'm, my neck is starting to throb because my heart's so out of shape. And I'm, I'm, I'm way over my, my rhythm here, my heart rhythm or whatever, the pulses or whatever they're called. And, and I'm out of shape. And I'm, I'm starting to pant and sweat and feel nauseated. And I'm st about 10, 15 minutes later, I'm still going. And I, I felt like shutting down. But I said, God, I, I'm desperate. I, you, you said to praise you in the dance. And I still don't feel anything. Where are you? I don't know where you're at. I need a breakthrough. I need a victory. I want to feel. I want to leave this place in victory. Praise you, the Lord, in the dance. All right, I'm going to praise you in the dance. After about 30 minutes of praising God in the dance, without feeling anything, the music stopped. And I was the lone weirdo on the side of the building without any music. Dancing. And eventually I almost passed out, so I just decided to stop and I, I made my way to the front of the building. The announcements had started and they were talking about, you know, Tuesday night prayer, Wednesday night service, Thursday night uh, connect point, Friday night this, and just monotonous. The music's done. I went over to the guys' pew. I sat right in the middle of the guys. We had a guys' pew and a girls' pew. And I sat right in the middle of the guys. And I leaned back, I was soaking wet, and I looked up to heaven, and I said, Jesus, I have given you everything I have got tonight. I ain't got nothing left. And when I said those words, if I could tell you visually what happened, the heavens opened up above me, and the glory of God came down upon me. I, I had never been drunk in the Holy Ghost in my life, ever. Anybody been drunk, plastered in the Holy Ghost? A couple of you have, a few of you, a bunch of, oh, a bunch of you have. And I remember when that glory came upon me, I slithered out of that pew onto the ground, and I began to scream like a banshee. Now, you must understand, there was no music, there was no preaching, it was announcements. And so everybody heard, ah! And I begin to laugh and cry and speak in tongues 
in a way, all at the same time, in a way I never had in my life. And part of me is going, oh, my God, what is happening to me right now? And I looked up and I saw the pew of guys. And every one of those guys were on the floor rolling and talking in tongues. And I glanced over at the girls' pew. And every one of those young girls were on the floor talking in tongues and, and out in the Holy Ghost. And a wave of glory hit that place. It was one of those services where nobody wanted to go home. Nobody wanted to go home. Everybody just stayed around the altar. One person started laughing in the spirit and about 15 people started laughing in the spirit and then the other side of the church started laughing in the spirit and people were prophesying over each other. We got so far out of the Holy Ghost and I realized and God taught me a lesson. He told me you can have whatever level of breakthrough you want. It just matters how bad do you want this. That's the question you've got to answer. That's the question you must answer. How bad do you really want that level of victory? How how bad do you really want that freedom? How much do you really want to go into heavenly places in God? If you go after it, God will give it to you. Sheila Bahataya, I want you to let your voice out right now and do exactly what you feel to do. I'm done preaching. I'm all done preaching. You do your thing for Jesus now. According to your hunger, so be it unto you. According to your hunger, so be it unto you. According to your desire, so be it unto you. According to your level of aggression, so be it unto you. If you want to come up and pray, come up. If you want to get out of your pew, get out of that pew. You do whatever you feel. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I give myself over to you. I give my praise to you. I give my voice to you. I give all of myself. 